Haas Formula One allegedly lost something like $50 million. This being a brand new top cart chassis. I figure each one of these cans is worth about a hundred grand. Yeah. Let's see what a hundred thousand dollars tastes like. Yes, a Formula One tears. What's up, people? So today I'm gonna finish preparing my brand new top cart chassis to actually get out and go kart racing. Uh, I've done videos in the past, actually with Project Cheapo in the background, with Genius Garage, of just showing that karting is the best place to start. So I'm looking forward to going back to my roots and running this thing. I actually got a race coming up this coming Sunday, so I have to finish preparing it. Currently, I've got the engine mounted on the chassis and tires and such on, but I still need to weigh this thing, get the lead weights on it for the class, and I have a hilarious thing we're gonna do with this. For all those of you that are Formula One fans, this is the infamous rich energy drink to which Haas Formula One allegedly lost something like $50 million. And I'm going to drink some and see if it helps. And by guessing about doing the math of how much money Haas allegedly lost, being this some of the original little ones they got, I figure each one of these cans is worth about a hundred grand. So we'll see what happens. Will it help me get the cart done faster or will I have a heart attack? Either way, I'm gonna finish this and I can't wait to drive it. So, currently I've got the Briggs LO206 four-stroke engine on it. Something I'm kinda of looking forward to when I was a kid, my go-kart back when was four-stroke, one of those flathead Briggs. This is a little nostalgic for me. But also, it's an entry-level class, so anybody from younger people to adults race these. The competition is amazing, and generally speaking, all across America, from a little Midwestern track to a big one, you're going to find an L206 class. So I think the competition is going to be really great. But so right now, i got to weigh this thing so we can decide how much weight to put on it. So let's time-lapse this thing. Hey, wait, a drink. Forget the time-lapse. Let's see what $100,000 tastes like. Yes, a Formula One tears. I don't know if this was a good idea. Tastes like Formula One tears. <sighs> What's the number in the 911 again? Hmm. I think I can cheat by burping into the air filter during a race now. <clears throat> okay, time lapse. <laughs> Having race cars is fun, but it's difficult to source unobtainium parts and get the right engineering expertise. Since 1975, Taylor Race Engineering down in Texas has done just that. So whether you're looking for dog rings and straight cut gears for your road racing car, or you are on a college Formula SAE team and you guys need a chain drive differential and trapeze, this is the place you gotta call guys, or go to the internet at taylor-race.com. You can see a link in the description below, and I hope you enjoyed today's video. Okay, people, uh, actually that was not in time lapse. That is how fast I was moving from the energy drink. Actually not, that wasn't that crazy of a drink. So I'm gonna chug another one in a minute and see if we can up the ante. But, so currently what I'm doing is uh, getting the seat placed as best I reasonably can uh, and then looking at the weight. So you guys saw the scales going down on each of the four corners of the cart so I can know where my total weight is, also kind of the weight distribution and what each corner is. Um, and you might, you can feel free to look a little closer here right now, but, one of the difficult things about the Briggs LO206 class, and if you go over to the front and look forward, you can kind of illustrate this, is it's a neat motor. However, based on the fact that the engine goes on the right side of the chassis and that um, you know the output or the drive shaft is on this side, it's tricky. 
you can flip your clutch so it's inboard or outboard, which if you want to come around to the back, I can show you that real easily. But the engine has to be offset a fair amount, so the driver has to offset. So you have to balance things with how reasonably easy it is for the ergonomics and not getting fatigued, as well as the weight distribution of the cart, etc. Now, I've mounted this with what I had initially. Uh, the Briggs L206 engines are not available in the United States at all right now. They're a few months out. This is a nice used one I've got that I've gone over and I've reconfigured and I've set up, you know, float bowl, high needle, get everything where it needs to be uh, in, in terms of being legal. And also want to do a shout out to Matt Geis of Ghost Racing over in Indiana. Really neat guy. I'm looking forward to working with him and he gave me some hot setup tips. I can't share them with you guys because if you guys want your motor set up hot, you should go over to Ghost Racing. Just a friendly shout out there. But if you look at the configuration of this, it ends up having to be over a fair bit. And there's lots that comes into play where you're really wanting to get those one tenths or tiny fractions of a horsepower, even down to things like harmonics and how well the engine is mounted. So for right now, this is the best I could do with the stuff I had. However, I may find that I want the weight distribution to move over and I have to move the seat over. So it's a little bit of a, it's a, it's a balancing act with that. So I'm gonna jump in the cart here. I wanna move my uh, mic over. So if it's getting scratchy, I apologize. Maybe go look from the front again, if you don't mind. So this seat is really pretty. It's a beautiful silver weave of fiberglass. Um, it's got a nice feel, but obviously a hard seat. And oh, oh, I put my belt back on. That was a terrible idea. You know, a cart seat, they're hard. And they're formed to effectively with a contour. This is weird. Is that weird? What up? Okay. So they effectively contour, but you know, it's, you're in there really tight and really rigid because that's what it is for kart racing. So I'm, I'm somewhat offset and I weigh right now 168 pounds. You saw me weighing myself initially. And the cart with a three quarter full fuel tank um, and then an extra 20 pounds of lead is what I needed to get over the 365 pound minimum for my class. That's the uh, adult LO206 one. I'm actually old enough that I'd qualify for the masters to race with older guys, but I'd have to put more weight on and I don't need to do that. I'd rather go fight all the punk teenagers. <laughs> so there you go. So I need to put weight on. So if I put on 20 pounds of lead and we're gonna show about where to do that and then maybe come over this side and look. If I put on this 20 pounds of lead and without having my helmet on and stuff, with a three quarter fuel tank, I am three pounds over the minimum limit. Now, the trick about that is, I'm not sure what my helmet stuff is gonna weigh, but I'm okay to go race right now and I can burn three pounds of fuel off, but I may end up wanting to put a little more lead on. So here's what I'm gonna do, and maybe come over to this side, you'll be able to see really well. He's having to step over a formula car right now. By the way, if anybody wants a really awesome formula Continental, it's for sale, yes. There it is, an Argo, hooray. So here's my lead and a couple things I got to do. I got to drill a hole in the middle of it for the hardware and I also have to paint it high visibility color. I'm going to shoot them white. That's just in case it were to come off, you can see it better on the track. Now what I'm going to be doing is you want to place it on the seat because the chassis flexes and turns into its own suspension and the nature of how it works. So putting it on the seat is the best place to make everything work. Um, and the first best place is kind of right up here, sort of in the middle with regard to that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the weight all on the left side to offset the weight of the motor. And with this 20 pounds, I'm getting in within four pounds of it being perfectly equal left to right in the back. So I think that's not a bad starting place and I can fine tune it later in the season. So what I'm going to do is uh, I want to keep it low. I want to keep it on the seat where it works and is safe and all that jazz and uh, bolts on. So I got a kit. We're going to do that in a minute, but we're going to put a couple under here up on the side and just keep it way over to the left to keep the cart nicely balanced. But I'm really excited about that and this being a brand new top cart chassis, I'm just over the moon about it because frankly this is the nicest cart I've ever had in my life by a huge factor. And um, I'm just insanely excited to get out and run it. I mean, all the components are absolutely amazing. And one thing that sounds silly for car people seeing, they actually changed the angle of the steering wheel. So, you know, old car racing days, you turn it exactly on its axis, but with this, it's a little bit forward and back too, because it starts at this. So that's gonna really get rid of fatigue. Um, it allows you to work bigger muscle groups and the steering wheel is a little bit bigger. So I'm excited to see how that translates to being on the track for a long time. Um, and I think that'll just work really well for your own physical fitness and staying in it um, and just make the competition even closer. So let's tell you what we're going to do. Gavin, the cameraman, wants to set up his go-kart, so we're going to weigh it too. But he's one of those two-stroke guys that likes to kill the environment by burning oil and going ah, ding, 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 all the time. I'm sorry, how much more horsepower does mine make? Uh, maybe three times. 
Okay, but listen, I don't need to compensate with more horsepower. I'm going to go run with everybody. It's going to be more fun. Well, and I'll, I'll be better because I'll have more competition. Mm, okay. Yeah. Ooh, All right. Uh-huh. Okay, so have fun when I lap you like twice a yeah, yeah. You have fun when you rebuild your motor five times in the amount of time I have to do mine. Once a season. Also, who didn't get the water out of the radiator and blew it up? Yeah, that was him. He blew up his radiator because he didn't get all the water out and it froze. Hey, guess who doesn't have a radiator on their cart? This guy. Guess you put a lame four stroke on the brand new super nice top. Four board. strokes are awesome. I will not take your insolence. Time lapse. <laughs> Okay, so it's time to mount the lead weights. Actually, Jacob is here, who's been helping with the Kings Air. Already drilled them all to go on. I'm gonna show you guys a special hardware kit. But I've got to do energy drink number two. Let's down another $100,000 of Formula One tears, yes! Oh, geez, Rick, I'm not sure it's a good idea. Morty, I told you, Morty, don't bother me. I'm doing smart people stuff here. Look, look Rick, I, I know what happens when you chug energy drinks. It, it's, it gets ugly, Rick. <clears throat> Morty, I got a neutrino bomb. We're gonna start over. We're gonna go find your friend Jessica. It'll be all right. You like I, Jessica, I, right? I, I, you got I, it, Morty. I know what you do with the neutrino bombs. We have too much energy drinks, Rick. I hate having to defuse your neutrino bombs. Uh, Morty, I gotta, I gotta build this go kart. It's gonna be really fast, Morty. Adventures, Morty. We're gonna have adventures. We're gonna have go kart adventures. You and me, Morty. Rick, I'm not, I'm not. Are you thinking straight right now? Uh, uh, Morty, call the hospital. Rick, you're scared. Oh God. <laughs> All right, you guys, actually, I'm not doing too badly with that energy drink. It's, it's almost as though it never delivered or something. But, so I got to drill these weights and um, figure out where I'm going to put them. So, first two, going to keep the center of gravity nice and low. You want to attach it to the seat because the seat basically is where the human body is and it all flexes kind of like an old school slot car from the, oh, sorry, Ridge Energy. Oh God, Morty. Anyway, so <laughs> it flexes and you need the seat to do that. So the first two we're gonna put under here. This is a good spot for it. And I just need to plan where I'm going to drill the hole. So one's going right here, simple as that. Yeah. Okay, let's see. And I'll show you guys this. So a special hardware kit I got for the lead. Uh, it's got special washers and a locking tab and all, which is very important. The other thing is, in a moment here, I'm going to paint the lead weight. It's actually white where the more high visibility. So it has this type of washer here, which spreads the load over the seat. You got a countersunk bolt here of a good grade. That's an Allen head. And then that spreads the load over the relatively thin fiberglass seat. You've got your lead weight right here. So th this will hold between the lead weight and the fiberglass seat. And then the rest comes through, of which I've got a big fender washer here to spread the load over the lead so you, your little nut doesn't like sink into the soft lead. So you thread that on and that is um, a nylon lock nut which is sufficient but it also has a very important little locking tab that goes through this drilled part of the stud here. So you've got double redundancy on this lead weight not coming off. Obviously five pound lead weight like this you're doing 100 miles an hour go-kart you don't really want to take one of those to the face. So that's why you do it. And uh, generally speaking, if you just prepare your cart well, start with something beautiful like the top cart, you're going to have a really good time. And um, you know, a nice, safe, amazingly performing cart. And I can't wait. So we're going to do this right now. going to fit it up. Let's uh, do this first one and call it a day. I got to spray some uh, paint on this and then get it out. So the next video coming up will be on the track. And I think that should be a lot of fun. I hope you guys will ex be excited about that. I'm just looking here. So you can see my fuel line and electrical goes pretty close by where that bolt goes through because the bolt's a little longer than it needs to be. Um, so I'm kind of wondering right now if it's possible to double up the lead. I mean, that's a lot of lead right there. No, it doesn't look like it. We're going to go one lead weight per bolt. That's a little more reasonable. All right. So here we go. It's already got that. What am I thinking? The energy drink has made me crazy. Durr. All right. So let's see. I'm going to put, 
If you can see here, the lead weight's flatter on this side and it's a little concave right here. I'm gonna put this side away from the seat so that when you bolt it down, it smushes the fiberglass well rather than trying to crack it down in there. If it was uh, the concave part. So the concave part away from the seat is what I'm going for there. Get the fender washer started. And the other thing about washers, guys, keep in mind, these are punched out. So they have one side, the top side here is a little roundier and this bottom side is a little sharper. I'm gonna put the sharper side up to the weight and the rounder side out. Not that it would really matter in any way, shape and form for this. It's just good practice. It's good craftsmanship, Morty. Okay. Okay, here we go. Ah, get on there. Why did I put it over here? Okay, let's get that on there. Okay, there it started. So I got that in place. So I can go ahead and drill the other ones and bolt them all down. This one I'm gonna put over here on the right. So I'll have the two up front. Excuse me. Oh, I should, don't, don't chug energy drinks. <laughs> put the two up here. That'll keep the weight distribution well. And then I'm gonna take the other two and put them on the far left side here to counteract the weight relating to the motor being off to the side like that. And then we'll get it out on the track and uh, see how it is, see how it's performing. In a future episode, bring it back and actually put all of the um, scales on a perfectly flat surface. We didn't go to the trouble of making this perfectly flat. I just wanted to get the overall weight really close and get it zoned in for the first testing, but we can get uber precise about it. And I may end up redoing the mounts and moving everything over for a little weight distribution because most of the cart tracks, if not all of them I'll run at, go in a counterclockwise general configuration. So uh, it should be good, but uh, I guys hope you enjoyed the madness. And of course this amazing, beautiful new top cart. Uh, if you guys are interested in this, of course, you can hit up Top Cart USA. They're headquartered in Indianapolis, Indiana, and great people to work with. So I'm pretty excited about that. They're also doing things with Purdue University on electric cart racing program. So if you guys are interested in that with your schools, high school level or college, check them out. Top Cart USA. I uh, hope you guys subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Shout out to KW Suspension. Guys, this year you're gonna see beautiful coilovers such as this going on many of my cars, including my Porsche 944, my Dodge Viper, and even some of these crazy race cars. And the reason is simple. This is one of the best shock companies in the world. It was founded in Germany in 1992 by Klaus Wolfarth, and recently they just launched a new 1.2 million square foot robotic warehouse where they're creating unbelievably nice suspension components such as this for 15 different original equipment manufacturers. So whether you're a street enthusiast, a weekend track warrior, or you are building the Le Mans car your dreams, guys, check out KW Suspension. Unbelievably nice shock. So go down in the description below, patronize them. You're gonna be glad you did.